SCP has always been a really cool idea to me. A massive, open-ended project in which writers can collaborate to paint a detailed picture of an alternate reality where the impossible becomes possible. And in the beginning, that's exactly what it was. The SCP Foundation website would become the home to thousands of SCPs, stories, anecdotes, and facts, all taking the form of secured documents. While it can best be compared to what Creepypasta was years prior, the difference is in how interconnected the world is. Not every SCP is a powerful monster. Some SCPs are barely anomalous. Some even become explained, and are no longer considered anomalies at all. This variety only strengthens the world building, and makes things more believable. I remember every once in a while after doing my school work, I would just browse the wiki, reading about all sorts of interesting scenarios. Public interest only grew when the biggest SCP game, SCP Containment Breach, was released on April 15th, 2012, showing off the more popular characters in an interactive environment in which the player can experience the anomalies firsthand. But much like many other sources of popular horror, both before and after it, SCP hit the mainstream. And since then, it has become slop. And while the slop has mostly continued to remain contained in the form of YouTube videos, some have even managed to breach into reality, polluting the Apple App Store and giving YouTubers like myself something to do today. Breaching into my everyday reality. Reality. Real. <laughs> Real! <laughs> The first game I'll be looking at is SCP Site-19. This game seems to be a mobile alternative to SCP Secret Laboratory, a multiplayer SCP game where you can take the role of scientists, guards, D-Class, and SCPs, among others. First things first, after entering my EPIC username, the UI is almost a bizarro version of Secret Lab. Except, as you'd expect, a little lower quality. Then I immediately got an ad, and... What? Are these chickens also anomalies? I don't know how they can lay so many eggs so unnaturally fast. Getting into the actual gameplay, it's about what you'd expect. You can choose a role and begin playing. Something commendable is that there does seem to be actual servers. But sadly, that also means that even the most active servers are empty most of the time. Loading into one, it seems the game is filled with bots, so it at least works to play alone. Spawning in as a D-Class with the goal of escaping, something I've become, oh, too familiar with, I encounter this blue statue guy. I'm not entirely sure what this thing is, but what I do know is that it's following me around wherever I go, so I better get away from it. I find a level 5 keycard, but for some reason I can't pick it up. Hopefully that doesn't become a problem later. On my way back, and did this guy just spawn SCP-066 and 999? At this point in time, I was still the naive little soul I once was. And, seeing hey guys, the chat, assumed people were actually on the server, typing things in. A part of me assumed this might have been an admin or something, spawning stuff in to show me. Therefore, I immediately lost all sense of fear, and even got close to it. I tried to enter heavy containment through a gate, but because the keycard I found was a fake key, made of cardboard, I tried to ask my new friend to open the door for me. It didn't work, and he got stuck in a wall. After that, I was going to make a nice painting of him. But then... Wait, he was trying to kill me?! Wait... No... THE PAINTING KILLED ME?! Doing some research, I found out that this is SCP-650, a black, and not blue, statue that strikes menacing poses behind you. I load into another lobby, after an ad for FUCKING BINGO JOY, this time with one real person on, and a Chaos Insurgency guy comes in and murders me. Then I respawn, and have this interaction. <laughs>
Well, that was weird. Last try, and this time I'm spawning in as an SCP. But sadly, because of the empty servers, I couldn't really play the game. But I think the funniest part is that the statue man was still following me! This next anomaly formally goes by the name Silent Maze. This SCP is a giant sentient maze, where what appears to be several clones of SCP-096 roam aimlessly to attack anyone daring enough to get close. Reading the description, it writes, Catch me if you can. I assume it's the maze that's writing this. In this game, you play as a homeless man, stuck in a giant maze made entirely of bricks. This could possibly be a reference to SCP-087-B, a video game loosely based on the SCP world made by the same guy who made Containment Breach. But here, it's more so likely that the brick assets were just available for free. You can only look left and right, so it's clearly taking some Doom inspiration for this one. Immediately, you can see the boy band BTS getting ready to perform. But our main character is a HATER! You get the option between throwing a rock, a grenade, or a pipe bomb. <laughs> Looks like Jimin isn't getting back from this one. Throwing different objects gets a different amount of skinny white men to start chasing you. And that's the game! It's pretty underwhelming. Obviously taking some inspiration from the Endless Runner games of the past, like Temple Run. The camera movement is pretty slow, but nothing is slower than the speed of the SCPs themselves. How can anyone find this yeah! menacing? A big factor of 096's original appeal was the horror that, at any moment, you could see his face and know in the back of your mind that somewhere, somehow, a giant, nearly 8 foot tall creature is now zooming towards you at Mach 5 and there's physically nothing you can do to stop it short of injecting acid into its spine or throwing it directly into the sun. While here, this is just funny, and the whole thing comes off as very cartoonish. Even in death, I can still escape him. With multiple of them coming after me, they're a little more menacing, but not by much. The next newly declassified anomaly is SCP-096 Escape 3D. Class, Keter. Avoid close contact with the anomaly. Faced with direct exposure, anything in close contact will unnaturally break, bend, and transform into voxelized, Minecraft-inspired graphics. Designed for children 9 and up, the exact demographic Minecraft YouTubers want to groom. The secret dungeon of SCP-096 has been opened. No one knows what kind of dangers are hiding, but there is a great secret hidden. I thought he was a monster. Actually getting into the game, this is just blatant false advertising. That dungeon they were talking about is just a straight up lie. Instead, there's a castle that clearly wasn't designed for any character in the game, and what is it with these games solely focusing on 096? I get it's one of the more traditional monsters in the SCP world, and also one of the more popular, but you have to agree there's something funny in the fact that there are so many depictions of a character that kills you if you look at its face. Luckily, artistic variations don't count. First things first, we're definitely not in the Minecraft world. Instead, we're able to just walk around in a relatively open space with some pathways, and oops. Oh my! Good Minecraft gameplay! I need to purchase game plugins with all of my money! Wait, something was down there! I need to go back! Am I Walter White? Okay, no more fooling around. I need to find the great secret inside of the SCP-096 dungeon. I go through a giant skull, maybe 096 is a dungeon, and hey, look! There are some chests. Maybe they contain the secret. But, oh no! Some 096s are spawning, and they seem to be having a lot of trouble getting up the stairs. Which is very weird, considering they seem to live in this castle. And about those chests earlier, they don't open. Clearly a trap to trick explorers like me into having to climb stairs. Which in this game is a little annoying. The sound design is pretty misleading too. You can hear zombie noises at all times and you never really know how far behind you the monsters are. Inside of a giant bedroom, I found even more chests I couldn't open, a hammer I couldn't pick up, and the remains of someone who must have originally lived here. Then, nothing. I just roamed around the castle while looking for something, anything, 
but I couldn't even find a monster to kill me. Well, I did find something, an open crack in the map, which clearly shows the level of quality we're working with. And soon enough, after surrounding myself with so many anomalies, I eventually began to act a little more like one myself. This Euclid-class SCP is commonly referred to as Scary SCP Monster Night Escape. If or when you were to encounter it, it's best advised that you keep a safe distance and not disturb it. The attributes this anomaly possesses is the bizarre ability to skinwalk the SCP name while also having nothing to do with it. It opens up just like your typical granny horror game, except the quality here has gone right down the toilet. I enter the house, I enter the back rooms. Okay guys, time to play Scary Doll. The game tells me to find a key and open the door, but the key I need to pick up is anomalous, as it was impossible for me to pick it up and it disappeared as soon as I looked at it from a slightly different angle. Then, the game told me to find my family, but I'm actually an orphan. With the task being impossible, I restart, and then get a completely different objective. Find Huggy Wuggy. Oh boy, I can't wait- WHAT THE HELL? So I lure him over and trap him in a cage. He seems to be secreting some sort of corrosive oil. Speaking of oil, that's what we have to find next. Oh, forgot. Find Matchbox NOW! Sadly, the character didn't just forget to find the matches, but also forgot how to use them. And after restarting the level, again, well, wh what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> Next is SCP Pipehead Survival Horror. This Archon class SCP is a giant forest in which a portal to the Siren Head world lies. This SCP game has the resounding ability to bridge the gap between fictional universes, allowing for the monsters of Trevor Henderson to run amok in the world of SCP. While several mobile task force squads have been sent to neutralize and secure the perimeter, the escaped monsters have been making quick work of the teams. The only thing that made it out of the forest were these photos. <laughs> so getting into the game, there are two game modes. Monster mode, where the character just fights monsters, and the narrative-based pipehead mode, which establishes a series of scenarios, and is also the main one I'll be playing. Loading in, we could see the horrifying monsters. As you can see, Base is under control of pipe heads, and it's my responsibility to deal with them. The whole aiming and shooting thing feels pretty terrible. The sensitivity is ungodly low, making aiming an absolute nightmare. I ran out of ammo with one more pipe head left, and because I couldn't finish the job, I decided to do some exploring. Judging by the hollow rocks you can pass right through, this world seems to exist as a false reality. Perhaps it's actually training grounds for the Foundation to train the task force units. Either way, I don't have high enough clearance to check. I was more careful the next run though. This level needs you to pick up a sniper to deal with these guys, and it was honestly more effective to just shoot from the hip. The actual scope is complete garbage, and you can barely even see through it. Even though there are both pipe heads and skinless dogs attacking you, you only have to kill the pipe heads. Because of this, most of the game is able to be played through just fine with only the pistol. Then I need to save this guy, then I need to save these guys, a bunch of pipe heads start attacking an ambulance and instead of driving through them they need me to kill all of them instead. I better be getting a raise for this, or at least a free trip to the chiropractor so they can fix my back after carrying this whole foundation. Finally, some other useful soldiers, and I'll never see them again. Eventually, I got bored and just played monster mode, which is the exact same thing, but you get way more ammo and the enemies have more health. Overall, this game is simple and repetitive, but under that monotonous gameplay is a very funny, broken world. <laughs> oh shit! The next anomaly is SCP Security Breach. 
While at first glance this may look like your average SCP containment breach, in reality, the game is a holdover from an alternate universe called the SCPU, the Scary Creepy Pasta Universe, where anime is real. And also, Skibbity Toilet is anime? Yes! Yes! This game, if we were to even call it that, is complete garbage. So you play as this anime girl in SCP Facility Sector 43. It doesn't look like any of the containment zones I know, more so resembling a giant space prison. But whatever. I go around killing guards. And the aiming controls are so bad! Looking around doesn't at all work how you'd expect it to, with accurate and consistent camera movement being impossible, as nudging it just a little moves it too far. The game then tells me to hit the invisible A button to pick up the ammo. The worst part of all of this is that, after dying, you get sent all the way back to the beginning to do it all again. Most of the time the character isn't even holding the guns, but somehow we're able to find and hack security security cameras, the game then tells us to find our captured friends. And to whoever's friends with this girl, I'm sorry but you're most definitely going to die in prison. I kill another guard and… oh, um, are you okay? The movement in this game is unbearably slow, especially when taking into account the sheer size of some of these rooms with nothing of substance inside of them. Dead ends are everywhere, and with so many possible paths it leaves me scratching my head as to why the developer didn't even think to include a minimap. Eventually, I found a giant Star Wars spaceship, and at that point, yeah, I'm about done. <laughs> the last game we'll be looking at is the most anomalous of them all, SCP- This one is EPIC! As we can see with the title screen, there are so many SCPs here. Loading in, we start where all good stories begin. The bathroom, with a mysteriously open door. Clearly, the main character likes to show off his confidence. As soon as we leave, we can see SCP-999. I tell him he sucks and talk to the scientist lady, who has a complete collection of every raw material in the observable universe. Then I go to the shooting range and steal some guns. To test them, let's see if 999 can stop bullets. He's a ghost. So according to the mission statement, we have to... Uh, SCP-278. So I follow the marker because... There actually is one in this game. Stupid SCP security breach. And I enter its containment chamber. According to the wiki, it's 54 feet long. So we're either playing as a giant in a world of giants, or someone didn't do their research. I begin having a deep conversation with it about the meaning of life. And then I shoot it. Then I talk to 457. A man who is literally fire, gained some social credit, and now it's time to meet 049. Surely meeting this one face to face is a great idea. Luckily, divine intervention stopped me from opening this door. As according to this text, um, the security device is no good. And I actually needed to watch an ad to get in. Something I couldn't have known as the Google Translate app I used to translate this uses the phone that I'm playing this game on. And it isn't just 049. Any non-safe class SCP, whether Euclid or Keter, wouldn't allow me through. If I really wanted to, I could go back to this game, turn on my internet, watch an ad, finally get to live out my dreams of romantically looking at 096's beautiful and delicate eyes. But instead, I guess I can just look at this key that opens any door. There's also just a bookshelf in here, for the inanimate key to read, I guess. Okay, this door would not hold SCP-106. This guy can literally walk through walls and come out of the floor. After this point, I took my anger out on 999 a few more times, and I, I don't feel so good.